Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial. In this video I'm going to be talking about MIDI and audio routing. MIDI routing can be useful if you've got multiple MIDI controllers and you want different sounds to be controlled by different keyboards. And audio routing can be used to then take those different sounds and send them to different outputs um, on an audio interface to your sound engineer so that he can mix the different sounds separately. So we'll start off by talking about MIDI routing. So as you can see here, I've got two different MIDI controllers. And if we load in a piano into Ableton, we'll see that this piano is currently controlled by both MIDI controllers. And if we bring in a pad, and we set both channels to monitor the input. We show the keyboard we play, both sounds will come out. Um, maybe in our scenario, we want to use this keyboard to just control the pad, and this one to just control the piano. So one way we could do that would be to go to the MIDI from section and set this one to say, only take MIDI from the code and this one to only take MIDI from the launch key. And so now if I play the launch key, we'll just get the pad. And if I play the code, we'll just get the piano. So this solution works great if we've got one or two sounds. Um, if we add in another strings, we can just say, yep, yeah, get this from the launch key as well. But if we want to change which keyboard we want to control these uh, pads with, we'd have to go through each channel and change it, especially if we've got a lot of channels, this could take some time. So if we insert a new MIDI track, and we'll call this uh, Synth MIDI, and if we set this to take MIDI from our launch key, set it to monitor it, and let's change the color to white just to make it stand out a bit. And then on these two pads here, we can take, instead of taking MIDI from this launch key MIDI, we can take it from our Synth MIDI channel. So now, when I play um, the launch key, both of these will get signal. And if I change it over here, if I change this to say code, now I'll take MIDI from the code. And we can do the same thing for our piano. So I'll create a new track, we'll call this piano MIDI. Set the color, set this to come from code and then we'll take MIDI from piano. Okay, that's working great. So that's MIDI routing. Um, and now what we might wanna do is send our piano and synth the different uh, outputs so our sound engineer can mix them separately. So we could do it um, kind of per channel as, we t as we're talking with the MIDI uh, input. So we can go to the audio two section and currently everything's going to master um, but we can change this to say, uh, go to an external output and then we can pick from here um, channel one, which would be the left speaker, or channel two, which would be the right speaker. Um, but we'll do a similar thing um, to what we're doing with the MIDI channel. So we'll create another audio track, and we'll call this piano. And then we'll route this to an external output and then we'll create Another one here, let's call it synth MIDI, uh, synth rather. And then we'll route that to another channel. And then we can send the, so say, send this to piano and send this to synth. So now our synths are coming out the right speaker and our piano is coming out the left speaker. Now, when I do live sets, I tend to just send all uh, synths to master and then pianos and tracks I tend to group separately but you can do it how you want to. Um, so what do these numbers actually mean? If we go to configure we can see how we can set uh, these outputs up. So we can go to output config and then we can choose which channels we want to be able to output sound to. So we can select more or less. So we'll pick six channels there, we'll say okay. Um, we'll just check our routing, so we've got our piano going to output 1, we'll send our master which has got our synth to output 2, 
and then our queue which is our click and um, click and guide to go out to channel 3. But what are these actually mapped to in the real world like on an audio interface? Well it kind of depends a bit on how what audio interface you're using but I'm using a Focusrite Scarlett 8920 um, and I'll show you how it's configured for that and hopefully it'll be similar for your interface. So if we go back to our audio configuration references and we click on this hardware setup, um, here we've got a the mix interface for the Scarlett. And if we go down to the routing section here, we can see this thing called door one is going to line output three, which is kind of the first output on the Scarlett. And then door two is going to output four and mix is going to output five. So if we wanted to get our third uh, channel to go to the next output we would click on this and we'd say door and change that to door 3 so now our click track is going to go to output 5 and that represents the physical output on the back of the Scarlet where we can plug our, our jack cable in to go into our DI and then into the sound desk. So you can route different channels to different outputs um, maybe for tracks you, you might send um, vocal effects, synths, pianos um, percussion all separately and in this case we've got our synths and pianos going to separate outputs. So I hope that's been helpful and thanks for watching.